Hey there folks, so today I've got a Game Boy that I already built and some new parts. We're going to be modifying it. Uh, so when I had originally built this console, I was taking a look at one of Cloud Game Store's new backlight kits um, and turned out pretty well. Seems to be a pretty decent kit. Uh, but at the time, I had to work with the shells that I already had. So that meant I was using a funny playing shell, which was designed for a totally different kit that I had to modify to get to fit this kit. Uh, well, now I have the shell that it's designed for, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, try and swap this thing over and uh, see how well that works. I do gotta go ahead and pull it apart first. Uh, first thing you'll notice in the back here, I have this battery mod that I was uh, testing out for the company that makes them. Um, if you happen to see these things for sale, I, uh, I'll, I'll do a video on this, go into more detail later, uh, but long story short, um, pass. They're not, not worth your time. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and, uh, let's do Game Boy stuff. All right. So I guess while I am, uh pulling this apart, I can talk a little bit about why I don't like this battery mod. Um, first and foremost, you may notice where the charge port is, means that you cannot set this thing down on your desk and charge it at the same time. Uh, basically you've got a bit of an Apple mouse thing going on. Um, personally, I think that's a real silly way to do it. The better way to do it would have been to modify the power board in here, and you can put a port sticking out right at the bottom, right there. You put your charge board right here. Uh, you put a better voltage regulator in here that does not have the screen rail. Um, and then you don't have to worry about caps randomly blowing up in your Game Boy. Uh, you could have proper power switching and charging built in. Um, and then you have more room in the battery compartment for your battery. Uh, second reason why I dislike this thing, I can't even get this one screw out. Good lord. Okay, whatever. It's not coming out. Maybe it'll be fine. Um, you might look at this thing. You probably saw the text on it. It says 7.4 volts, 1,250 milliamps. Uh, well, first of all, this is why looking at just milliamps is a bad idea and why you have to consider wattage overall, because this is a two cell battery. Uh, each cell has 1,250 milliamps worth of capacity, uh, but because it's in series, the capacity is calculated a little bit uh, weird. Anyway, I suppose this cable is long enough that I don't actually have to unplug that. It might make my life easier, and I might regret not unplugging it, but... We'll take that one step at a time, I guess. So this is an original model Game Boy uh, there aren't any modifications to it aside from the case and then the uh, backlight kit, which replaces the whole front half, front board. Uh, but otherwise, this portion of the Game Boy is 100% stock. Alright, so there is our backboard. Let us take a look at what comes with the new kit. Oh, and that screw finally fell out. So we've got brand new membranes, new cart shielding, a whole set of screws, the battery terminals which I will put in last because if I can I will still use my battery mod, but it's unlikely. Uh, and a nice set of black buttons. Just because I don't like the battery mod doesn't mean I'm not going to continue to use it because I literally already have it, so whatever. Um, There's some 
really weird choice of screws in here. Let's go ahead and sort these. I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume that there are some extras. <laughs> uh, we have three different length screws. I'm not really sure why. One of these is a security Torx. Um, I'm guessing they just sent me a bag, you know, grabbed a handful of screws and sent me a bag with them. I don't know if that's pretty typical. I'm pretty sure this is a sample, so maybe not. Uh, but anyway, here is the shell we're going to be using. It is a nice glossy clear. I'm actually really, I'm really excited for this. They made a, um, a pearl white shell that I think just looks phenomenal. I'm, I'm really excited to try those out whenever those actually start shipping. Uh, but let's go ahead and get the new shielding in. And we will use the short screws for this. This is a brand new shell, so I'm threading these for the first time. That makes it a little bit more difficult to get the screws started. Uh, as well, there's a little bit more pressure when putting these in. But it should be relatively easy to get them going straight. Once they're in, nice and tight, I'm going to back them up about a quarter of a turn so that they're not in there too tight because I don't want to risk cracking the plastic. Uh, it is just, it, it's metal and plastic, the screw is going to win every single time, uh, so you don't want to over tighten it. You just want it tight enough to hold the stuff in. Uh, as far as modifying the back shell, I don't think we'll need to do anything. So we will drop that in. And... I guess we'll go ahead and get it installed. And then we'll use the four medium length screws. get the motherboard in. Uh, I said this board was unmodified, but looking at it, I can clearly tell that it has been modified. Um, I think I went through this thing and cleaned up some uh, battery corrosion. I don't think there's any actual modifications to the system or to the circuit, just some bodges and repairs I had to do. As I'm looking at the discoloration on this copper shielding and then these solder joints down here. And that has me written all over it. Alright, same thing once these are in. Gonna back them off quarter of a turn. So things don't go anywhere but they're still nice and secure. Anyway, um, might as well keep going while I'm doing 8 million screws. There's no balance charging for this thing, so it's two cells in series, and there's nothing keeping them in balance other than uh, the similar structure of the battery cell itself. 
Alright, this kit should just come right out, except that I forgot I had done this. Touch sensor is taped in place. I used some entirely unnecessary tape on that. Holy cow. up, that comes up, and then we can pull the screen out and flip that up. Excellent. Take these membranes and save them, because they're nice membranes, same with the buttons. Just not quite what I want to use for this. And we'll grab this bracket out of here. I was just about to say, unfortunately, we'll have to figure something out for the adhesive, but the adhesive stuck to the bracket, so you don't even have to do that. You just have to line it up. This one actually has all of the screw posts that it's designed for, so you don't have to eyeball it. You just drop it right in. And I suppose we should put the buttons in. I am actually going to use these black membranes because I think they will look a lot better in this transparent shell than this nonsense. But I have heard very good things about these membranes. Anyway. Let's try and get this reseated. Realistically, I should have unplugged this stuff. But I think we're going to be all right. And I guess I'll use more short screws. Oh, I just scratched that board. Thankfully, that's on the inside and we won't see that. feels like they're not lining up properly. It'll help if I use the proper size bit. Yeah, it helps significantly if you use the proper size bit. Almost like that's how this was intended to go. That one's not going to work because that's a security torx. <laughs> Okay, I was joking, it looks like they just threw a handful of screws in, uh, but I forgot how many freaking screws there are in these things. 
And worst part is I already see a problem that I think I'm gonna have to remove all of these for. I don't even know if this one will go in because of that problem. But if we flip it up, it's actually looking pretty darn good. I just gotta get that board in the right place. And it looks like the screen's not seated properly either. All right, all these out again. Bear with me. Should go quicker this time though. the first. Let's get the screen seated all the way in the bracket. pain in the butt. I don't know how you're supposed to seat this normally, because as soon as I put that down, the whole board shifts over to the right. I wonder if it would make things easier if I just tape it down. I'm going to unplug that for now. with that because we want that to stay right there I mean the board not this sensor specifically I'm just putting the sensor down so I can stop fighting with it hmm I have an idea let's use a little bit of double-sided tape I'm going to use this red adhesive stuff that came with a totally different kit because it's what I have on my desk. But I'm also only using a little bit. this to secure this board in a place that it fits. And then get this plugged in. Great effort not to put my fingers all over that exposed LCD. Oh, I lifted it out. That's okay. Let's get this plugged in all the way. Let's try again. And forgive me, I know you can't see this on camera, but I'm just getting the LCD seated in the bracket, or attempting to. Let's 
This is incredibly fiddly. And of course, now that that board is stuck to it, every time I lift up the board, the whole screen pops out. Oh, there we go. That makes things easier. I'm going to pause while I get this seated. I foresee this taking uh, another 20 minutes on camera or about 30 seconds off camera. Hang on. All right. I got it. Oh, good Lord. Okay. Um, it was significantly easier when I didn't have to try and keep everything in, in, in the camera. You know what I mean? Uh, the problem I'm having now is getting this board seated because I need to take my thumb off to do that, but I'm afraid to. So let's try. A spudger. Good lord, okay. That is not the easiest thing to do. Let me get a few screws in and then we'll see what it looks like. Hey, there we go. Looks pretty good. And I only touched the screen a little bit. All right, I think we're good to reassemble. Some of these I did the uh, back off turn, some of these I didn't, so I'm just going through all of them. And we're all set to continue. Look at that. That's pretty good. Wait, are these Phillips? No, of course not.
the heck? Well, that was bizarre the way that didn't want to thread in. Seems to have worked though. All right, so unfortunately this shell is uh, pretty similar to stock, which means it has these little ribs in this battery compartment, which means I can't reuse my battery mod. Which leads me to another one of my criticisms for the battery mod. It requires a lot of trimming the Game Boy shell just to get it to fit, and it's not easy trimming either. I will not be modifying this one for that. threaded sucks because these bits just don't fit well on the Y-shaped screws. Because the aftermarket screws and the aftermarket bits are designed for different targets. Right, that's in, back out. That's in, back out. In and back out. In and back out. And then two more. In and back out. One more. in and back out. Excellent. We're basically done. Now we just need to get the lens transferred over. But first, let's get some batteries in here. I forgot the uh, thingies. There should be uh, two of one kind and then one of a third kind, or one of a second kind. The lone one goes on top, the pair go on bottom. And I always say don't mix and match batteries, but trust me, these are all the same batteries. Um, I just put new wraps on only two of them. And now, last thing we need, the lens. Let me get this cleaned up. Make sure I didn't break it with my handling. Excellent. Looks a little crooked though. It's kind of unfortunate. Oh well, it is what it is. It's dirty, but I think it's all on the outside. You can use a little bit of heat to release this, but I think you can also just flex the shell a little and it'll pop right out. Huh, 
And we can even reuse the adhesive, how convenient. I was fully prepared to get the heat gun out. So, despite my problems getting that seated, uh, this was still a much better experience than installing in this shell because this one I had to cut up several times and the bracket I just kind of had to eyeball it because this shell doesn't have those screw posts that the bracket is intended to sit in. Um, also, the color is like, damn. That is, I really like that. But let me get the easy flash in there. Let's take a look. Battery is dry. Oh no. Oh, this isn't. Well, that explains why the battery is dry. This isn't my uh, normal easy flash. Of course, there's a prawn folder. I don't even know what the hell that is. Okay, let me find the other easy flash. Or just use the EverDrive. Because the EverDrive has what I'm looking for. I have two easy flash carts, and this bites me in the ass every time because for some reason I just refuse to put more uh, memory error. Refuse to put the ROMs on this thing. But I gotta find the other one so I can get the ROMs, so I can put them on here. Okay, there we go, that makes more sense. Uh, what? Do I not have 240p test suite on any of these? Oh, GB test ROMs, it would be in there, ha. Huh. Don't worry, I understand. I understand my organization scheme. So I wanted to look at this because I wanted to show that the screen is slightly cut off. Um, you saw me use the bracket. I'm using their shell and their screen lens with their kit. In theory, it should all line up. Unfortunately, it doesn't. I don't know if mine's just a one-off or what's going on. Um, it could be that I reused the bracket. Maybe it flexed a little bit too much when I peeled it off. But personally, it's good enough, uh, but it is off. Um, all of the other tests I did with the last video on this thing, or I should have, and it should be pretty good there. Uh, we're not going to bother with any of that. Yeah. Oh, but I will say it does look almost askew. Like on the top right of the screen, there's more black than on the bottom right of the screen. I don't know if maybe it's my angle I'm looking at this thing or what. It's not perfect, but with, you know, you guys saw how much I was struggling trying to get this thing in there, so maybe that has something to do with it. Uh, the bracket is pretty flexible. I would like to see it have more than two points of contact because it is possible to shear it one way or the other. But all in all, I, I mean, I realistically, I had no intent of playing this Game Boy anyway. Uh, I just wanted to build it and look at it. And for that purpose, it's going to do a hell of a good job. I suppose we can put the, uh, the, sh the sticker on. I think that's it. I gotta get all these extra screws cleaned up. 
It came with one extra long screw, uh, and then for some reason a security torque screw. Uh, but otherwise it came with exactly as many screws as we needed. Oh, two extra long screws, excuse me. The rest of these are from the other shell. Uh, I really, really like the glossy clear housing. I think it looks incredible. Uh, as far as how this thing feels, I mean, it feels pretty darn good. I don't have any problems with it. Um, the buttons feel nice and responsive, nice and tactile. Uh, I don't know. Let's pull up Pokemon Silver, I guess. I'll just run around in that real quick, test the buttons out. If it ever loads, there it goes. It's incredibly quiet. I think that's a my Game Boy problem, but that is incredibly quiet. All the buttons and stuff work as I'd expect. They feel totally fine. I know D-pad is usually a concern and, I don't know, seems to work. Uh, it doesn't feel like I can hit all four directions simultaneously, but I don't really have a game to test that with. Um, I don't have anything that can test the inputs on the original Game Boy. At least more than one button at a time. But otherwise it feels fine. Alright, so I think, I think I'm going to end this here uh, because this isn't a backlight video. I have already gone over this backlight kit, um, said my piece on that, and my opinion hasn't really changed. It's pretty good, but, you know, unless it's, yeah, y y you can, you can watch that video or read the wiki entry on it if you're curious. Otherwise, this shell is absolutely phenomenal. It should work with stock Game Boy uh, housings as well, so if you want to do an original Game Boy backlight and bivert mod, it'll work totally fine with that. Just don't use this screen lens because this screen lens is offset to work with this kit. Um, but then again, this screen lens came with the kit, not with the shell, so it should be fine. Uh, otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and give a shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this my way to check out the fitment on it. Uh, it could be a little bit better. It's not the greatest. You can see there's a little bit of a gap in this side, or maybe you can't see that. Um, but really just on that side though. The look of the shell I think is phenomenal. I, I really, I really like this uh, glossy, transparent look. I think it's, I think it's really incredible. Um, most other manufacturers are doing, uh, oh, there it is. uh, like this, this frosted transparent look, which, I mean, all right, that's fine if that's, if that's what you're into, but Cloud Game Store has been doing these, uh, transparent glossy housings, and I just think they look so cool compared to the frosted ones. Yeah, they're fingerprint magnets, and yeah, they're going to show wear a lot quicker than the, the frosted ones. But realistically, if you're not, like, you know, throwing your Game Boy in your pocket and bringing it with you everywhere, you know, if it's a, a, a shelf queen, as they say, um, it looks incredible, and it's going to be totally fine. Uh, and it's totally playable, too. It feels really good. It's just, like I said, the biggest downside is going to be that it is going to wear down quicker, it's going to show that wear more significantly. Um, it's going to show handling, like even just me poking it, it's covered in fingerprints. But the look is second to none, I think. I think it's incredible. Uh, there's another color that they just uh, introduced with the DMG shells. They're doing uh, what's called a pearl white, which is not transparent at all. There's no transparency. Oh, look, a bee drill. Uh, but instead, it's just a regular white shell with that prismatic, 
uh, coating on it. Uh, of course, I don't have a similar example handy. Um, but the it's it's not a coating. It's it's mixed in with the plastic itself. But the effect is something similar to the pearl white Nintendo DS and uh, Game Boy Advance SP shells, where you see it has that short sort of shine. Uh, the difference is this is matte plastic, whereas this is going to be glossy. Uh, I think the glossy looks incredible with that design. I can't I can't show it off. I don't have one, uh, but there are pictures out there already and it just it it looks incredible let's see if i can just chuck a pokeball at it and catch it bah oh well anyway yeah incredible shell uh it is designed a little bit more oem like so it has those ridges in the battery compartment unlike the funny playing shells which are nice and flat inside which is a little bit more conducive to battery mods. Uh, but even on the battery mod side of things, you have to cut off all of these ribs on the battery door too, and then try and get your USB port lined up, which is a lot easier said than done, and why I had a clear battery cover on this thing instead of the blue one. Um, but as long as you don't want to use it with those battery mods, which I sincerely do not recommend, uh, those battery mods anyway, then it's totally fine. I'm digging it. Uh, anyway, I will go ahead and throw some links to this stuff down in the description. I will throw a link to the original build I did with this backlight kit in this shell. Um, and throw links to Retro Game Repair Shop's site if you want to check this stuff out for yourself. Uh, but otherwise, I think that's it for me for today, and uh, I'll catch you all next time.